What it is, what it do, cyber world. It is your girl, the one and only Ash Said It. Ash Said It.com. Ash Said It.com. Welcome back to the Ash Said It Daily Podcast Show. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for all of your support, all of your love. Over a quarter of a million streams. We're close to one million streams. It's coming. I can feel it. I can feel it tingling in my fingers and my toes. And uh, today, <laughs> today I am joined with an inspirational story, an inspirational man. Mike Ryan, how are you doing today? I am doing exceptionally well. Every day is a blessing. It is. Every single day. So, Mike, let our audience know, where are you from? Where do you represent? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations on the soon-to-be million, if not five million, uh, listeners. So that's great. <laughs> Do whatever I can to, to share the, the hugs and the loves out there. Uh, I, uh, I often say I wasn't born in the United States because I was born in Washington, D.C. <laughs> and uh, it, it's not a state. <laughs> don't get me started on the representation or taxation without representation. But anyway, I was born in D.C. and grew up there most of my life. But my roots are in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh. My father was born at St. Joe's, and my uh, grandfather was born in 1888 uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. He worked for the Atlanta Constitution for over 50 years as a commercial artist. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, every, uh, and I'm a, I'm a uh, third degree artist uh, through my mom's side, and obviously my grandfather, uh, my dad's father. And so we spent many summers in uh, Atlanta, on the wow. West End, where uh, my dad grew up and my grandfather lived. And then when my grandmother passed away, my grandfather came to live with us in D.C., and I was like his caretaker at the age of 15. So mm-hmm. I kind of had a um, kind of a clue to my uh, life in the healthcare world mm-hmm. and caring with people and understanding that. And ultimately, that's kind of what I did uh, during my career. Yes. Well, well, kudos to you and kudos to your family for, you know, for really, you know, they're part of history. <laughs> the AJC is huge yeah. here in Atlanta. So um, kudos to all of you all uh, for that. Wow. That's amazing. See, you never know. You learned some new stuff. I like learning new stuff, Mike. There you go. There Every you day go. you learn something <laughs> new. <laughs> all right, Mike. So we're going to just jump into your story. You've got a very inspirational story on one fateful day, your birthday. Yeah. Um, something yeah, happened. as I, I say, my, my birthday, I just celebrated my sixth birthday, although I sound a lot older than I am <laughs> six. My son at the time was actually six, and what uh, happened is that I had uh, sudden cardiac arrest, or uh, as doctors call it, sudden cardiac death. Mm-hmm. And um, I was at a uh, birthday party for my son's best friend over in Marin. And uh, normal day, it was a little warm. It was uh, September 18th, mm-hmm. uh, 2011. And I was uh, you know, enjoying the day. It was a little warm, but it wasn't crazy warm. And suddenly they, uh, you know, ready to do the cake and the uh, pinata. Uh, there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of uh, birthday parties up here. They have pinatas, and the kids take a big stick and they knock the, the candy out of the pinata, mm-hmm. and it goes flying. But anyway, before that happened, all the kids are lined up, and there's probably 40 people at the uh, party, including uh, about 20 children. And they start getting lined and hitting the pinata, and the stick broke. And my son is pretty athletic, even at six. Uh, I knew he always had something in the car, so I ran out to the car. Uh, at this uh, private residence, and I jogged back, and I gave this, uh, not a baseball bat, but a stick, uh, and said, here, use this. And right at that moment, um, I felt myself collapsing, and Mm -hmm. I I felt like I just, you know, just was going down. I said, oh, no, and that's the last I remember. Now, the the rest I'm going to tell you is really secondhand that I've heard from people that were there, and I suffered a sudden cardiac arrest, I went into V-fib, which means unlike a heart attack where you are conscious and uh, you're aware that you may have, people always talk about having an elephant on their chest and having pain in the shoulder and stuff like that, I wasn't there. I was clinically dead. And fortunately for me, uh, there were people who were uh, at the party that uh, had learned um, CPR. And... Also, 
report to me that they they decided um, to decide to uh, help me, and they started two women started uh, um, performing CPR, and so you know they called nine one one to get the ambulance there and stuff like that. But it took a good five five seven minutes for an ambulance to get there. Now you know. Again, what I, I, I can tell you, this is hearsay, because I went there, my wife was there. She started to perform CPR, and they pulled her off and said, you can't do this, you're the wife. And so, you know, these two women began to uh, uh, press my chest, do the chest compressions, and then the other woman uh, began into doing uh, resuscitation, breathing uh, on the mouth. Um, found out later that her daughter is very upset that mommy is kissing another man. But oh, it was me. goodness. She was being... She was bringing life into my yeah. uh, lifeless body. So, uh, long story, kind of short, but uh, I ended up being revived. The uh, they, these women kept me alive. They pumped my heart for a good five minutes through mm-hmm. almost exhaustion. The EMTs got there, and the last thing, the most, the most recent thing I remember that happened coming out of there, it was kind of like this dreamlike um, situation where I heard talking, I heard the, the EMT say, stay with us, Mike, stay with us, Mike. And, you know, it was very cloudy and kind of like coming out of a whoosh. <laughs> it's what I remember. Yeah. And next thing you know, they're putting me on the gurney. They you know, have medications on me. They're putting me in the, into the um, ambulance, and they're taking me to the uh, local hospital. And they said, we don't think you had a heart attack. And, in fact, I didn't. I had cardiac arrest. My heart had stopped. And unfortunately, over 300,000 people have cardiac arrest and die in the United States every year. Um, you know, heart disease is the number one killer. And so, uh, long story short, on that part, I ended up having um, a catheterization showed me that I did have some blockage mm-hmm. in 100% of one of my arteries and wow. 80% blockage in uh, three others. Uh, I was stabilized and I said to my wife that I, formerly I used to be a hospital CEO. I started out working in the unit uh, ICU and the CCU at Providence Hospital in D.C. So I knew a lot about hospitals and, and heart uh, recovery and surgery and stuff like that. And I told my wife that um, I said, get a hold of Dell and Dell Vecchio Finley, who also went to Emory University, <laughs> was a mentee of mine. He was a mentee of mine for a good 10 years. And... I said, find, uh, get a hold of them, and now that I was stabilized, find me the best surgeon, uh, cardiac surgeon in Northern California. Well, he picked up the phone, did a lot of calling, and was able to get me, uh, I think, one of the best cardiac vascular surgeons in Northern California. Uh, they transferred me back to San Francisco where I live, and so uh, it would be a little easier for the family. Yeah. Uh, I had open heart surgery on September 22, 2011, and was home three days later. And mm-hmm. fully recovered. Uh, go to the cardiologist. They say, you know, you, you, you know, take care of yourself, <laughs> and yeah. and you should live a long life. Both my parents are 87; will be 87 years old. Uh, there's no family history. Uh, I was asymptomatic, which means I had no symptoms. I didn't wow. have your typical um, issues as far as feeling pain or anything like that, nauseous or. Uh, and I, it just goes to show you, and that, it, that's that's not uncommon. About 25 percent of patients that have sudden cardiac arrest had no symptoms whatsoever. Mm-hmm. The other is that 70% of these um, incidents have in, have in the home. So I've been an advocate for the past six years or so um, for doing learning CPR. Uh, mm-hmm. Prior to that, I was on the American um, uh, Red Cross board. I was chairman of, of the uh, board in Louisiana. So we're always promoting CPR and the importance of that. Little did I know that CPR and the advocacy that I had, you know, 20 years before, would end up uh, indirectly saving my life. So, you know, I'm, yeah. you know, on social media, I, I tell people, you know, learn CPR. It can hurt. You may save a life. In fact, here in San Francisco, I'm on the board of the American Heart Association, and we, about two years ago, we passed it as a requirement now for every student in high school prior to graduation has to uh, learn CPR because they, they're more than likely if they're going to save someone, it's not going to be someone on the street or at a basketball court or whatever. It's going to be one of the family members at home because that's where most of these uh, arrests take take place. And the survival rate, depending on where you live in the the world, it's about 98% of people, 90% of people die. Mm -hmm. Uh, So if you can save a life through CPR, then that's 
that's a wonderful thing, and that's why it's yeah. a spectacular day today for it me. Is. Absolutely, as every day is a blessing from up above. Exactly. That you know, I tell people all the time, like like you know, take this day as a blessing as as it is because guess what right. this day that we woke up and we took a breath and we were able to to have our bodily functions and put on our clothes and go to the places that we need right. to go to somebody someplace on some part of the world didn't wake up this morning that's the reality that's right. of it right that's the reality of it yep. and we need to be thankful yep. for every single day that we're given because it didn't have to be that way yeah, and if you got kids or family members, as I, I often say, I give hugs. I give hugs beforehand, but now I give harder hugs, heart to heart mm-hmm. hugs. And, you know, here I'm looking outside and we have smoke in San Francisco because of these fires in yeah. uh, Napa in the surrounding areas. And I think there's about 17, 20 people that, you know, are not, uh, that, that died in these fires. And, but more equally tragic, we've got 183 people, they don't know where they are. So oh, more than likely, yeah. they may be at a hospital or they may be, uh, you know, uh, may have perished in the fires. And so it's an everyday precious. And, you know, that day I had no idea that I was uh, on the brink of not being alive and being, I have three children, and not being able to go to, you know, their celebrations of life uh, yeah. that it will do um, in, in the near future. So, yes. you know. It's uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a warning sign. Uh, if people said, you know, you got a new lease on life. I said, no lease here. I bought the whole thing. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> it, and, and try to uh, do what I did before. The other thing that I've always done, and like I said, I, I grew up I, and very entrepreneur parents. They both my parents started their own companies and in healthcare and publishing and stuff like that. And I've been one thing that I did. Someone said you had some good karma. I said, well, I hope so, and because I've mentored people all over the world, and because I had some great mentors. Interesting, most of them were female. So about <laughs> more than fifty percent of the uh, my mentees are female, mm-hmm. and more than fifty percent, probably close to seventy, have some uh, the more diversity uh, in that. So I'm not just uh, mentor the people that look like me or talk like me or have my background. And I think right. that. That's, you know, we're all human beings, and however I can give back, that's kind of what I have done. And I continue to accelerate that over the past six years. Wow. So what categorizes someone as being clinically dead? Just so we can we can get specification. Yeah, there's no, sensa- yeah it, it's, uh, there's no sensation of the heart uh, beating, no circulation. Um, wow. Tom Petty, uh, you know, passed away last week. Uh, at 66, which is, by the way, 66 is the average age of uh, cardiac arrest that, that happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, that, it means that you have, uh, you may have brain function, right? And that's the critical part is that you've got to get that circulation going. And that's what CPR does. And if you remember the DG song, Staying Alive, mm-hmm. that's actually the beat. If you're pressing on someone, you can have hand uh, CPR only. And, you know, people are speaking maybe, you know, culturally or to do or whatever the idea of putting your mouth on someone else. That's not the most important thing. The most important thing is you have uh, hands compression on the chest, and you do that to the beat of staying alive, staying alive, mm. uh, the BG song. So uh, if you're able to do that, um, then for, you know, at least five minutes or before someone gets there, that then you're going to have to have, you see in a lot of uh, schools or uh, workplaces, it's, AED uh, defibrillators, those are used to shock the heart back into rhythm. And most of the time, if you're able to do that, uh, then you, you have a pretty good survival rate um, that gets beyond. But a lot of times, people, there aren't bystanders. I had people that were trained in the military, that some of my good best friends that knew me, saw me go down, and they, they went to shock, mm. and they didn't know what to do. And, and yet these two strangers, these women that I never know, knew before, that are now friends for life. Of course. <laughs> and, and, that, that, uh, and I keep them by, in my life, uh, oh. you know, just went into action. And so um, that, that helped my survivability. And so the answer to that is really the cessation of not having a heartbeat, mm. not having a pulse, and not having the circulation of the blood to get mm. blood to the vital organs, primarily the brain. So when you do get a, um, a shock that brings you back out and, and gives the heart to get pumping again, 
and you're able to uh, you know, have a normal life, hopefully afterwards, more than likely some surgery. I didn't know I had coronary heart disease. Mm. I had no, no clue. For 20 years, it, it just didn't happen. Uh, unfortunately, I was a, I lived in a high-stress world of uh, hospital management or management, and then also I lived in 11 states uh, moving around, including mm. a beautiful state of Louisiana, but Louisiana <laughs> had some great food, too. Oh, and yeah. Unfor- yeah. Unfor- unfortunately, I, I'm not 6'2", like my son. Uh, I'm mm. a lot shorter, but I at one point weighed 250 pounds. Mm. And uh, now I'm down to, you know, 160 or so. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that extra weight, um, you know, I back 10 years of my life, I was a little, I was a lot better. I lost, you know, five forty pounds, but I, the damage had already done. So, you know, we tried to instill my son, who became the biggest fundraiser for the American Heart Association in, in uh, the Western United States, to eat right and very active, and because, you know, part of that is family history. But I had no family history, which was very surprising. Yeah. Uh, again, my parents are, my mom is 86 years old, just talked to her. She plays tennis just about every day. My dad is active, and, you know, just having an active, um, you know, lifestyle. It's very important. Eat right. Eat the rainbow, as they say. Mm-hmm. And so you're able to not just have, you know, take a uh, apple versus, you know, um, a processed apple pie or, mm-hmm. you know, eat more greens. One yeah. thing I haven't done uh, since, since then, I haven't just, I don't know if the meat packers associate like, I haven't had any red meat for six years. And you know, it, it's more, you can have lean meat and all that, but I just made a decision not to have meat uh, uh, since that, since my cardiac arrest. Yeah, I think it, it makes a difference. I've been meat free since 2005. I just made a conscious decision um, to give up meat. I had a friend of mine that was working for PETA at the time, and she thought that oh, it was okay. wonderful to share a lot of the videos and stuff. And, you know, Mark, right. I'm one of those people, like, I can't unsee things. <laughs> and once right. I saw right. <laughs> once I saw a few things that really disturbed me, it made me look at the meat industry differently. And right. um, I've not looked back. I don't miss it. After, after I'd say, the first year, um, it kind of sets in that, you know, you're not really missing out on anything anymore. Right, um, right. And most venues have, you know... Yeah, Even, there's, yeah. You, know, you know, they have some solid or some yeah. you know, alternative that, you know, 1,500 calories or whatever it may be, but it's, you know, 2,000 is usually what you eat a day. But, but yeah. anyway, yeah. But, and sugar, sugar is definitely uh, oh, yeah. uh, another another area. Of, you know, I basically uh, eat the rainbow. I try not to eat anything that is white. So that's refined sugar, flour, those types of things. Uh, and, and uh, you know, and if it's dairy, I'll do, you know, one or non-fat milk or something like that. Gotcha, gotcha. But, you know, you just got to stick with it. That's yeah. the key. So what were some of the changes that you made as far as becoming and staying active? Yeah, I mean, I was probably, uh, I went to the gym. I was doing that. But it's really, um, we've got, uh, we're very involved with senior rescues of dogs. So mm. we, I walk dogs every day. I'm walking a dog or dogs at least 30 minutes. So that's, you know, not uh, that aerobic, aerobic, but also go to the gym and do the bicycle. Uh, I also got a Fitbit and do 15,000 uh, steps a, a day. Uh, you know, I've got over 10 million miles in a very short period of time. Uh, eat right. Uh, try to reduce stress as best can. That's a hard one. So that's, I'm kind of wired type A personality, but uh, that, that's probably the biggest challenge is, you know, uh, anyone who's been in that could become less stressful and not uh, let that get you. Uh, I actually moved away from D.C. at one point because traffic was so bad, and that's when I moved to a little town in Louisiana. Yeah. I didn't have to deal with it. But then, <laughs> I didn't have to deal with the food, but uh, it was all good. You know? Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't change anything. So. Yeah. <laughs> so last but certainly not least, Mike, what advice yeah. would you offer to any person now that's listening to you and maybe they've got some health challenges that maybe they, they are aware of? And, you know, listening to you, you had no signs, no symptoms. There was nothing to indicate right. that there was anything wrong. What advice would you right. offer to people today about their health? Yeah, I think that, you know, I, I'm probably the exception uh, or, you know, 
25% had no symptoms. In fact, I had just started a, um, a new routine with my wife going to like a boot camp. And I went to my doctor uh, a week before and, and she said, you're, uh, <laughs> you're fine. Your heart is fine. Well, mm-hmm. a little bit. we didn't do it. An echo song, stuff like that. We didn't do the, uh, you know, the, right. the cap or anything to see. But, you know, I, I think listen to your body uh, in general. Um, and if you, you know, feel you're getting fatigued or whatever, you don't have to start by, uh, you, know, um, you know, going to a Zumba class or going to, uh, you know, running a marathon or whatever, but just starting with uh, push, doing push-ups away from the table, uh, away from the uh, – the sizes and portion that we as Americans have, make it a little smaller, leave something on the plate, uh, would be one thing. The other is um, to get some type of exercise, hopefully aerobic. And then the other is um, try to find peace and kindness to others uh, so mm-hmm. it brings down your, your stress level and and be, uh, become a mentor mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and help <laughs> others because I think that can also be a great ROI to your health and, yeah. and helping others as well as yourself. I can see that. I definitely, I, I will co-sign on that with you, Mike. <laughs> there you go. That's great. <laughs> I will co-sign on we'll that. Soon we'll have 5 million people co-signing. That's you. right. That's right. Y'all check it yeah. out. Yeah. Wow. Well, Mike, thank you so much for sharing your story. I'm thankful that you're here, oh, you know, because otherwise, I who am I going to speak with, you know? Exactly. And you, you you're here. You are crickets. <laughs> But you're here for a reason, you know, and for you to share your testimony on so many different platforms, I commend you. I I tip my hat to you on that. Thank you. Um, Learn CPR, folks. Yes, learn CPR. Yes, I'm CPR certified. I believe every year um, they send me, um, you know, actually Emory. Emory, shout out to Emory Hospital out here in Atlanta, GA. There you Um, go. They send me out my, um, my yearly uh, renewal stuff, so I got to actually go and get that done every December. But um, Ash said it. CPR. That's, that's right. I know. I need to put that on the website. <laughs> I am CPR certified. <laughs> very important. Very important. But Mike, thank you so much um, for coming through. It's my pleasure. For sharing your testimony. Somebody out there needs to hear it. I know it. I can feel it. <laughs> there you go. And uh, let them know, thank Mike. You, if they, Ash. thank you so much. If they need to get in contact yeah. with you, um, what do they need to do? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm pretty active on social media. Um, I think called Twitter, so I'm at Mike, M-I-K-E, Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, Ryan, R-Y-A-N, Mike Gordon Ryan. Uh, you can contact, follow me on that, and then send me a direct message. And then I'm also, at one point, was the most connected person on LinkedIn. So just look my client up on LinkedIn, and you'll see my shaved head and goatee there. So that's me, and I'm in San Francisco. Send me a link, happy to... Uh, link with folks and help them any way I can because that's why I'm here. So. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> okay. Have so, a good one. You Bye. too. And thank you all for downloading the show and for continuing to support me. We've got a lot more stuff coming in 2018, you guys. Stay tuned to everything. Keep in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, you look them square in the face and tell them, don't believe me, just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. Because that's what we're doing this for. We're doing this for the history books. Social media is nice. It's cool. It's fun. But real life is so much better. Till next time.